I'm a fan of sports for a lot of the reasons you brought up. Mm-hmm. The personal development Mm -hmm. and using sports as a vehicle Mm -hmm. for almost having the spiritual transformation Mm -hmm. and the spiritual experience. A lot of people look at sports as just a thing to kill time and that's cool too. But it's that deeper aspect that stands Mm -hmm. out to me. Somebody who I think is embodying a lot of that leadership right now is Coach Prime, and you happen to run into him at the airport. <laughs> yeah. Tell us a little bit of what that was yeah, like. That was a, a definitely a different experience. Uh, first off, you know, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, um, just even about him, like background of history, two sport athlete, you know, I think Bo Jackson might have been one more that I can't think of right now. The only ones to do that and, and watching his documentary and seeing how he would finish a game and then fly to another game. That's insane when you think about it. Right. But uh, to be able to I was getting off the flight for uh, from Maui to Phoenix, uh, three o'clock in the morning. And I, I'm I'm seeing like, I'm like, oh, man, that look like Deion Sanders and the group that was with me. Are like, that ain't Deion Sanders. So, you know me, you know, I'm a person that I'm just going to go up to him. He's a man. Right. So I go up to him. I'm trying to feed off his ego, right? Because I know I watch his documentary, so I think I know him, right? <laughs> so I'm like, hey, man, you know, thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for paving the way for other people that, that, that look like us. Thank you for, you know, being a phenomenal person. And thank you for the words that he talked about last year. So he talked about in a news conference, I don't live my life because of you, right? You know, uh, and this is when I forget who they were playing, Colorado State. And the coach from Colorado State talked about his shades and how he is and his swag. He said, this is just me. I, I am who I am. So I told him, thank you for that. And jokingly, I was like, hey, uh, I got a son that's a sophomore that plays football. Um, you can start recruiting him now if you want. And I was giving him his address and stuff like that. And he joked with me. He got up. He gave me like a brother hug. I said, hey, do you mind if I take a picture? I said, I know I normally don't do this. I know it's 3 o'clock in the morning. And he obliged. And he was down to earth and everything I expected to be. So it was it was a cool moment. I love when the <laughs> persona matches what you were expecting. Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing that I loved about this past season, mm-hmm. I think the – Colorado was like a one win team the, yeah. the year before him yeah. and my best friend we we're down here working out and okay. he goes oh yeah they just hired Deion Sanders I'm like oh they're going to be more than a two win team now they'll be at least a three win team <laughs> and then they come out and they win the first, first three games yeah. and now there's people talking national title yeah. hopes and all, all this yeah. craziness but it just shows the power of an infectious leader exactly. with a great personality who's trying to build winners That's true. changes the culture immediately yeah. and now there's people with the audacity to say that the season was a failure right. Like, they came from a one-win team right. into becoming the darlings of national media right. for at least a three- or four-week run. Yeah. That's super impressive. Like, you got, even that to Travis Hunter, to his son, um, to the, the national attention uh, that they got, too, and the money that he helped build to Colorado. Um, but even thinking about, you know, you talk about leadership as well, um, anyway, since we're on sports. They even talked about Andy Reid and the difference between him with Philadelphia Eagles and him with Kansas City Chiefs, right? So he's talking about he's the same person. He's always been a, a office uh, offensive guy, right? That can help get the best potential out of any quarterback. They talked about you know he was fired from Philadelphia Eagles. He had zero Super Bowls. They talked about what was the difference between him and Philadelphia besides Mahomes and him in Kansas City, right? Same coaching style, but the leadership and actually being able to blossom and develop your players and your team. Um, you don't see Andy Reid getting no interviews. Oh, this is all me. I did this. He attributes his team that he works with. And it talks about leadership and how the difference between you can be in one organization and not be successful. Or, you know, you can be in another organization. Now he has, what, three championships in the last, what, four or five years. It's just crazy to think about. But it's all about the team that you help develop, you inspire, and things like that. Definitely comes down to that leadership. And it's interesting you brought up Andy Reid. Mm-hmm. I was a big Eagles fan as okay. a kid, especially because I watched Donovan McNabb just yeah. kick the shit out of the He's Bears awesome. yeah. all the time. And <laughs> the bear, I'd be oh. watching it with my dad. And my okay. dad does not care about sports, okay. so he'll just appreciate what's good football. Okay. And he goes, oh, that guy's great. And I'm uh-huh. like, Dad, he's beating us right now. And he's like, but son, he's a great yeah. quarterback. And yeah. so I started to really like them. Okay. And I wanted them to win that Super Bowl so bad. Yeah. It's interesting how that fueled the Patriot dynasty, yeah. but at the same time, it almost tarnished the legacy of Andy Reid. He could yeah. never win the big game. Exactly. Now he gets to go to a new exactly. culture, establish it his way. Exactly. So I, I think that was, it was really insightful. 
any other stories that you have of athletes you've met that made an impact on you or just people that you thought lived up to what you hoped they would be? I'm even thinking uh, a short time I met, uh, I was just telling you about the story, meeting Denzel for a short time through the Boys and Girls Club as well. And I didn't get to meet and and chat with him like I wanted to, but I I saw his presence and it felt his presence, right? How he dealt with kids and things like that. And you think about Denzel was in his 60s maybe, and he's a mega uber superstar, right? And just being able to relate to, to kids. And a lot of them actually, I was telling you, didn't even know who he was, right? It's like, oh, Denzel, huh? <laughs> you know, he's like, I'm, you know, I, I'm the man, you know, I'm, I'm Denzel. Uh, but just seeing how, you know, no matter how big, we talked about this earlier, how big a superstar you are, being able to relate to people and be able to tell them stories. You talked about the value of being in the Boys and Girls Club. You talked about the value of growing up and having a goal and how one of his goals wasn't even to be a movie star and things like that. That came along later on and how, you know, he reaches back to other people to help them. And he wants other Denzels in that room and to be themselves. Um, In fact, he said, other Denzels would be better than me. (laughs) <laughs> not just who I am. He said, be better than me. Take it to the next level and things like that. So, you know, just seeing him and I've, I've been able to uh, fortunately meet, you know, some people in my past that, you know, definitely made impressions on me. But even people in the community that I see, uh, community leaders who are doing the work every single day, uh, not just the people that we see on TV, but the people who's out there grinding, the people, the teachers in the community, the social workers. I have more of a fondness for them now and the hard work that they do and talking to these families, talking to these single parent mothers and the work that they do um, as well. 